Hello YouTube, and welcome to the third episode of Judging and Grading Every Fitness Channel. You know the rules by now, I'm basically going to go over every channel I've ever watched, and I'm going to give my opinion based on objective criteria that are all ranked from 0 to 10, and the goal is to have the highest score possible. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, they are in the description for you. I'm not going to go over these criteria again, but since I'm going to cover six new channels today, you're going to have plenty of time to actually accustom yourself to the system I created. And without further ado, we are going to start today with the first entry, Steve Shaw. Programming. 9. Steve has been on the platform for a long time and he can be credited for actually bringing programming into the minds of a lot of lifters who were just following programs and didn't really have an idea of what they were doing. He was the first one to review very famous programming methods like German volume training, high intensity training, all of that stuff that is now widely understood by people and widely covered also had to start somewhere. And actually, if you trace it back, you trace it back to Steve Shaw. And therefore, he deserves a very high grade for it because it's easy nowadays to actually talk about volume intensity and also preach programming. But back then, it was like trying to tell people to wipe their asses. It wasn't something that people were used to do. It was going against, against the customs of YouTube Fitness, and he did that to a great extent. So he gets a good grade. Experience 9. 9 because Steve has been lifting for a very long time and he went through several stages that each had their own sets of challenges. For example, he was extremely obese at some point because he was chasing strength and numbers. And even though that was a mistake, as he would himself admit, that gave him a very good perspective on the type of mistakes that people are going to make when they are trying to become better powerlifters. And so he has a lot of experience in that. He then transformed his body, he has a pretty decent shape nowadays, and that is also very valuable. What I grade experience on is the range of things that the individual went through that they can then pass on to their subscribers. And since he's an older gentleman, he's lived a lot of life, and he lived it for a long time, he has a good grade for that as well because he's a wealth of resources when it comes to that. Integrity 8. He has gotten into some drama in the past, like most people on this platform, it's inevitable at this point, but he's a man of character, and I think he would have a tough time actually finding things to reproach him. If we were to be nitpicky, I think you could cite the Vegan Gains interview, where he stormed out of the interview because he was getting flustered, which it's tough to blame him for that. You can also name the fact that he did work for Tiger Fitness, I think he doesn't work for them anymore, but Tiger Fitness is a garbage company and therefore I cannot give him a 10 for integrity because it leaves a dark spot on his resume sadly. But beyond that, I don't see why he should get below 8. Usefulness for Steve Shaw's channel, 8.5. Because if I were to use an adjective to describe the type of videos he makes, it would be useful. For the most part, it's like a toolbox. It's not sexy, it's not slick looking but it does the job. When you need something, you reach into the toolbox and you're going to get what you want. It's not the type of channels that work the best on YouTube Fitness nowadays because information is shunned to a certain degree. But if what you want is the ability to learn about lifting, that's what Steve does. So if we're going to look at usefulness alone, it's a good grade as well. Character 6. Steve has what I call boomer energy to a very high level. With him, it's not necessarily a bad thing, meaning that he's an old timer. You know, when you go like to the coffee shop and you talk to the people who came back from war and they tell you all the old stories, you get that type of vibe from, uh, from uh, Steve. Sometimes it's horrendous. Sometimes some of these guys are unsufferable. But for him, it's more of like a paternal vibe. I, I don't sense any malice in this. It's still, however, true that many people don't vibe with that at all. I've noticed that the type of individual that is going to like that type of channel the most with someone who is older is also going to be either older people or the folk who also lifted for a long time and therefore they can relate or very young men who are going to like that type of like authoritative attitude. For me, it's not my cup of tea at all, but I understand that some people like it. 
However, it's true that Steve is a little bit hard-nosed and he is prompt to confrontation and he is very stubborn at times and therefore it also rubs some people the wrong way. So I just cut the apple in the middle. And in the same line, in the same vein, dogmatism 2.5. Steve is extremely dogmatic and actually most people who train for strength are. It's sort of a quality almost of a strength coach, but it can become a detriment. It's good to know when things work, but it's also good sometimes to open your eyes and realize that there are other options out there and just because your method happens to work doesn't mean that it's the end all be all. The issue is that Steve doesn't really work like that. I've seen him having beef with several people because he just refused to shift his views or he refused to admit that maybe sometimes he was a little bit too extreme, too radical. But as I said, usually for strength that gives the, the actually that creates the best teachers. But for someone who is going to look for someone open-minded that is going to give a wide range of options and advices, it's not the best. And on an ideological standpoint, it's impossible to deny that he's very dogmatic, so he gets a terrible grade. Originality 5. I would have ranked him lower if it weren't for the fact that Steve is an old-timer, as I said, and he's been doing that for a while. His channel nowadays, in 2022, would get a 2 for orig originality because it's not original. It's just, it's very standard, right? You get what you expect. It's lifting advice and there's no crazy twist about it. But since when he started doing that, it wasn't so common, he gets again a middle of the ground or middle of the road rather great. Black Pill 6.5. He doesn't talk about the Black Pill much and you will not hear Steve Shaw discuss limits that much. He doesn't try to tell people that things are impossible. But there is a trait of him and a gimmick, quote unquote, of his channel that I think acts as a Black Pill of sorts. And that's his hyper-focus on bodybuilding, especially natural bodybuilding. I think his most viewed video is one where he talks about natural bodybuilding, where he says that natural bodybuilding is a joke. I understand where he's coming from. The issue is that most of the people who do that, in reality, think that they are attacking pro bodybuilding, but what they do at the end of the day is they hurt natural bodybuilding because they're going to come out and say, oh, it's you can't look like this natural, or this is not a good standard, etc. And that's correct, but they don't realize the impact it has on people because it has created an entire subculture of morons in reality who are going to think that it's impossible to make it big naturally and that you must take drugs. So paradoxically, these are the biggest advocates for PDUs and therefore they black pill the fuck out of people. And the thing with Steve is that you can tell that he sort of took a bite out of the apple and it was sweet, so he did it again because that type of talk is extremely popular on YouTube. Shit on bodybuilding and everyone is going to come around to see. And therefore I had to dock points because it has damaged many people. Humor 5. Uh, he's got that boomer humor going. Uh, a, lot, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people on this platform actually have that type of humor where it's over the top vulgarity and it's dad jokes. You mix the two together and you have Steve Shaw. Personally, it doesn't make me laugh. I understand that it does work for some people. It's not very sophisticated humor. There's not much thought put into it. It's mostly saying shit or fuck and then adding like God damn it, something like this. And then you add again a dad joke. It's very repetitive. It's again, it's not very creative or inventive, but it still counts as humor. At least there is an attempt. He's trying to be entertaining for his subscribers. And he's always been like this, by the way. You go back to his very old videos, he was always trying to actually engage the viewer with that type of humor, so it deserves a 5. Parasocial, 8, because there's not much parasocial going on Steve Shaw's page. I think it is mostly because he's not an aesthetic bra, so his body is not perfectly sculpted. He's also not the strongest, he's strong, don't get me wrong, but he doesn't have that God status. And usually when people worship you, it's because you are exceptional. I'm not saying that Steve is mediocre, it's just that he doesn't have that God halo, that God status that people, fanboys, usually actually clamor for. And therefore he gets an excellent grade for parasocial. He also doesn't encourage the parasocial because I don't think he knows what it is. And so it's all good and well. There's also the fact, and that's a sad reality as well, that his channel is pretty much dead at this point and therefore he doesn't have the hype that also tends to attract the type of people that are becoming parasocially attached to the YouTubers. Empathy 3. 
It's a terrible grade, but it's because I think he doesn't care. He doesn't really try to relate to his subscribers. He doesn't really try to connect with them because for the most part, again, he's, he's dadding it up, meaning that he's being very paternal. And the issue is that many paternal figures, many father figures, have that tendency to exist above the people they talk to, and therefore there can be no equality, there can be no connection. He talks about his past, he talks about himself a lot, but I don't see this ability to actually create a mirror of the self and read people through it and welcome people through it, which is extremely important to be empathic. God Complex 7.5, not too bad, not super good. I remember a time where he was at his peak, he was getting a ton of views, it was getting to his head to some degree where he was starting to get a little bit full of himself and you could see with the way he interacted with others, especially his subscribers. Nowadays it's much better. So it's not a bad grade, it's not a good grade either. Production quality 6. He doesn't really try to have crazy camera quality equipment or crazy sound. He doesn't really edit his videos much. It's not terrible, don't get me wrong. I mean, the thumbnails are decent. You can tell he's putting in work, he's a veteran. But he doesn't have that, that willingness to put it, push it to the next level. I think he doesn't care. Science 7. He mentioned science here and there, but he never abused it like some other people did. He's not the type of person who's into strength and hypertrophy who is going to cite you a gazillion st uh, studies to actually prove their point. He mostly tells you, hey, I'm right and you're wrong. It's, it's not great because it's dogmatic, but at least he doesn't make use of science in a malicious way. Clickbait 4. You look at his channel and you notice something really quickly. Steve Shaw is suffering from what I call algorithm syndrome, meaning that based on the views the videos get, you can immediately collate the title to them, meaning that he knows exactly how to get clicks. He's done it in the past. Sometimes he holds back and you have a normal title. Sometimes he wants views and that's when he just, again, pulls all stops and is going to write things in all caps or write very absolutist statements, which he knows attracts the eye and he knows is going to get visibility towards his channel. So I have to give a bad grade for that. On top of that, it's also true that for the most part, the videos that he clickbaits with tend to not be his best videos. They tend also to be videos that are a bit alarmist or videos that are going to create some level of damage down the line. Content Recycling 2 because it's an old fitness channel, someone who posted a ton, he posted thousands of videos, and therefore it's unavoidable that there's going to be some level of recycling because you sort of run through all of your options past the, like, the fifth or sixth year's mark if you refuse to branch out. And he never branched out, which means that if you have been following him from the start, you see the same videos coming again and again and again the same five videos about delts, the same five videos about bicep curls, 15 videos about the bench, etc. It's very tiring, it's very boring, and therefore it gets a two. Conciseness, 8.5. He started making longer, longer podcasts nowadays, but the bulk of his content is very short videos, to the point videos, you're not going to waste your time. Seniority, 9. His channel is 11 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Out of the 11, I think he made a good use of his time because he started as like a YouTuber that speaks to a camera directly, very, very close contact with his subscribers. He evolved through that. He participated in the community a whole bunch. He called out NetherBeast. He called out many people that were frauds. So overall, he was a great influence on the community and he has been doing that for a long time, which deserves a very high grade. Supplement 7, I would have given him a 10 if it weren't for the fact that, again, he worked for Tiger Fitness. And Tiger Fitness sells a whole area of supplements that are complete bullshit. And the people who worked for Tiger Fitness tend to be frauds and scam artists as well. So I dock points for that. And then Physique 8.5. As you can see, I'm being very generous with that grade. But it's because he's an, an older gentleman. He used to be obese. So these are two attenuating uh, circumstances, meaning that in a vacuum, I would never give that grade to his physique. But for someone who's in a situation, it's actually quite good. He's big, he's fairly lean, etc. Not the most aesthetic, but still. And so for Steve Shaw, the total grade is 130 points. Next up, Kinobody. Programming 7.5. Unlike what you might think, 
or believe when you look at just the exterior and the way the channel is shaped, he nobody knows about programming. He actually programs, he has created training regimen that are not that bad. The issue is that he names them corny stuff like the Greek God training program, so you're going to immediately just believe that it's going to be nonsense. Uh, it's actually not that bad, meaning that again, he understands how to program for low frequency, he understands intensity, he understands uh, body, body part splits, etc. He also has a tendency to promote good types of programs, at least on the training part, he's actually on point for, to a certain degree. Uh, his leg training advice is not the best to adopt some points, but it, he actually is someone who knows what he's talking about when it comes to that. Experience 6. He's a young buck. I think he's older than me, but the issue with the experience and the reason why I took away so many points is the fact that he's very niche. He's done his entire thing with the marketing and the Hollywood body, etc., etc., which is good if it works for his brand. But the issue is that it means that he shoehorned himself into a specific specialty again. That means that he doesn't know, know much of anything else. And you see it because his boxing advice, his martial technique advice is some of the worst I've ever seen in my life. Also some of the funniest. He gives terrible advice the second it's outside of his range. But because his range is so restricted, he didn't experience much. And therefore, he is not much of a resource for anything. Integrity 4. I have a tough time explaining to you why I'm giving him a 4. Because he never really did anything bad. He has, he has the persona and he has the profile of someone who should have been involved in a ton of drama. But most of what he's gotten th through and into is, is mostly mundane. It's nothing really bad. And yet, I cannot shake the feeling that if he got the possibility, he would actually be terrible. But I think he never actually managed to reach a point where he could abuse people and scam people to a degree where he would actually turn into a villain. So he's a good guy by default. But that doesn't count in my word, you still get a low grade for integrity. On top of that, again, he pulled some stuff that leaves me dubious, like the Nabi verified movement. That was a big fucking joke in reality that he started. He, out of all people, I've, I've never understood that. On top of that, he has his entire Hollywood body going, and we're going to get back to that, but he is responsible for the terrible body image and also the terrible standards that are permeating this entire fitness culture. So I had to give him a bad grade for this. Usefulness 5. If you want to get shredded, if you want to develop like the baseline of muscularity, if you want to start understanding what a decent program looks like, you're going to be able to learn that from Greg's channel. But you're not going to get much more than that. Meaning that once you get to a certain point, his channel is either going to keep you stagnating for years, you're never going to go anywhere, or you're going to have to jump on another channel. And this means that the channel itself is not that useful at all. So, il a la moyenne, as we say in French. Character. Character. <laughs> the French in me just took over. Character 3.5. Because I think he's a terrible person. Um, and it's not me speaking, it's the robot speaking, it's the cyborg. I scanned him and what I saw on my biohacking scan is not of my liking at all. He has that personality where he's trying really hard for you to like him. He really wants to be cool. And anyone who knew people like this in school, especially the boys, knows how unsufferable that is. Because one, it's fake. Two, it makes you unlikable. When you try so hard to be charismatic, it doesn't work. Charisma is something that comes naturally or that you work on. You can't hypnotize people into liking you. On top of that, the entire Bruce Wayne personality personally doesn't resonate with me at all. I don't understand why it's supposed to be so cool to be someone who inherited a lot of money and then you're going to make a show out of it. In my eyes, that makes you unlikable. There's nothing wrong with being rich, but there is something wrong with trying to make a personality out of that. Dogmatism 9. Very high grade because I don't think he cares that much about debating ideas. For the most part, he's going to tell you something and you're going to go with it or not. He doesn't care if you believe him. He has a ton of ideas that are very clear cut, like all of the stuff about intermittent fasting, all of the stuff about developing certain body parts to look like a Hollywood movie star. All of that is clear cut. All of that is like set in stone in his brain. But that's that. There's no discussing it because it's a personal preference. And it doesn't fall into the rank of anything that could be considered dogmatism, so high grade. 
Originally 8, another high grade, and you might think, okay, that's strange, why would you give that guy an 8? He's so generic. Well, he's generic now, but understand that he started this entire, like, pretty boy movement. He didn't ignite the aesthetic movement, but I think what he did that was very smart is that he saw it, understood that the entire spin with, like, the teenagers that flex and, like, do mm, this mm, in the camera and stuff like this, was going to either run its course or was going to start disgusting people. So he sort of veered. He took a different path. He still has the entire aesthetic shtick going, but he, he sort of packaged it with golden leaves. He made it into something classy, something pompous. And in a sense, he made it fresh. He made it so that when you fed it to people, when you arrived onto the scene, people were awestruck because it was brand new and therefore they embraced it and it's the reason why he became extremely popular. So, originality, very good grade. On top of that, we're going to get back to it, but he didn't just come out of nowhere with his stuff. He worked on it for a very long time. It was all part of his plan. He is indeed the Dark Knight. And speaking about Dark, Black Pearl 3. This grade is well deserved and it's deserved for a simple reason. His entire obsession about body fat percentages is creating small lifters and then creating body dysmorphia that is going to lead to people who are going to be miserable and think they have shit genetics. On top of that, I must say that Greg doesn't really know what body fat percentage is. He is still persuaded that he is below 10%. I think I saw a video recently of him saying he was 6%. I think the one part of his body that's 6% body fat is his feet. And even that is a toss up. Meaning that he's going to give advice to people based on body composition when he doesn't understand what body composition is and that's dangerous. Any big natural, any strong natural is going to have to pack on, pack on some fat at some point or the other. Doesn't mean that we have to walk around like walruses, but if you insist on people staying shredded, you are just going to sacrifice their potential. And that's the reason why I told you that he sort of took the aesthetic thing and he revamped it but he kept all of the toxic stuff and the black pearl stuff of staying shredded bra, which is entirely idiotic. Humor, I gave him a 1 out of pity, because I usually don't give zeros unless the person is really, really bad. Watching Greg is painful at times, because if there were no attempts at being funny, I could accept it, like if you were stoic or something, but it's not the case. He really wants you to like him, so he's trying to make you laugh, but it just falls flat. And I remember seeing videos of him back in the days when he's hanging out with girls and you hear them laugh and you're like, okay, based on that laugh, I can tell that he paid you to be in this video. You don't want to be here. That's a fake ass laugh. And I'm myself feeling cringe because I can tell that you're not enjoying yourself and I'm not enjoying myself either. So he's a great entertainer, but don't expect him to make you laugh. He is not much of a stand up comedian at all. I think there is more humor in pictures of dead babies than there, are, there is on Kinobody's channel. Parasocial 8, a surprisingly high grade for the channel of someone who some could consider to be an egomaniac. And that's for a simple reason, a very funny reason actually, a, a much funnier reason than his channel. It's because people troll him all the time and therefore what he has on his page is not a fanboy culture. It's a trolling culture, or at least that used to be true, meaning that every time you went into his comments, it was pages and pages of Greg, the type of guy to blah, 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 blah. And it was always very funny. He absolutely hated that, of course. What he didn't understand is that it was keeping the parasocial at bay. I'm not sure he would be happy to hear it because it means that he would struggle to sell products because people would not look at him through a very positive light because of that. But I can tell you one thing, these comments were funny. And actually, these were the funniest part of his channel. Again, now that they're gone, not much remains. But that lends him a very good grade for the parasocial. He can thank the trolls for that. Empathy 2. You look at him, and I'm, I've used that comparison in the past, but this time it's perfectly justified. It's like the guy from, from American Psycho. He is there... He's talking to you, he's human, I'm pretty sure he is human, as a cyborg, I think I, I could tell if he's someone that's my kin, like a robot, or an animatronics, but you don't feel a connection at all. And sometimes you look into his eyes as he speaks to you, looking at the camera, and it feels like he's looking through you, 
which is a feat because the fuck, I'm not in front of you. How are you doing that? How are you doing the dead fish eyes? How are you doing the sociopathic stare, even though I'm not in the same room? That is almost impressive. He is trying really hard, in a sense, to connect to his viewers, but most of the time it's to make a show of his life and to make his viewers envious, in a sense, to create desire for his products. The problem is that all of that sounds very fake again. You look at him through a daily, daily day, a day of the life or a vlog or four day of eating, whatever, and it looks like he's just rehearsed for this and he's just repeating lines. It doesn't feel uh, impulsive. It doesn't feel real at all. It's all like a big movie. It feels like you're watching a big, big movie, which is what he's going for, but it also means that there is no empathy. There's no connection there. God Complex 3, he felt miserably at that, but you, but you can tell that his goal was to become the Chad and the Alpha that was going to be widely followed by people, by teenagers. It didn't work because he doesn't have the personality for that. You can tell that he's not that confident at all. He really wants people to like him, and it shines through for anyone with eyes to see. So he could have become very dangerous, as again, as a god, as a god persona, if he had what it took to actually drive, uh, dr uh, drag people in and to lure people in, but he doesn't. I'm still giving him a, a bad grade because he's still attempted, but he is uh, not actually doing very well in that endeavor. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I hear clicks and like the saliva clicks, it's really annoying for me. I hope that it's not annoying for you guys. Production quality 10, in the same line as what I said previously, it feels like a movie. You watch him and it feels like the latest production from, what is the name of that guy? The guy that made like the Batman movies. It's amazing. It's, he, he uses drones, he uses very high quality cameras, he uses uh, professional crews, the sound is amazing, the picture is amazing. All of that has been very well researched. All of that is really on point, so perfect score. Science 7.5, it's in the same line as dogmatism. He doesn't try to really push his ideas using science. He, saw, he sometimes attempts it with like intermittent fasting, but he's going to mumble like a study under his breath, like, oh, intermittent fasting is 25% more muscle. And then he's going to move on to the next thing. He won't even prove anything to you. It's just something he uses in passing. So it's not that bad. It might convince some people, but he's not trying really hard at it. Clickbait 7. It's not terrible. You could also expect him to be especially clickbait because of his entire uh, uh, market and his entire business model. But he is... Titles are pretty much just him telling you something like, oh, this is the best shoulder workout or, oh, this is the best body fat. It's not especially attractive to the eye. I think that what really drives people in is the image that they are going to receive once they clicked. But for clickbait itself, it's, it's okay. It's not terrible. Content recycling four. Kino Body has been around for a very long time at this point. And with him, because he does so few things, it's only really normal that his videos would feel stale and feel repetitive. And I think I understood why. It's because he doesn't have much to say. He has that one, felt, one thing to sell you, the Hollywood physique. And what he does is he basically cycles through teenagers. So every year there is a new batch of teenagers on his page and he does the same spiel. I guarantee you if you go on his page and you look at the calendar year and you go back 2019, 2018, 2017, 21, whatever, you will see that you will be able to pinpoint exactly which videos are going to come out when and they're all the same with the same categories because he's just repeating himself at this point. Conciseness 9.5. Videos are short and are trimmed like they are. They are trimmer than his waist. There's no problem with that. It's, there's no extra fat on his videos. He is going to go exactly to the point. He's going to cut what is necessary to keep you engaged. Seniority 8. A very high grade. I usually give a terrible grade for seniority. And that's because most people don't have much of it. Or if they do, they squandered it. Greg is an OG. His channel is 12 years old. And for those who don't believe me, please do me a favor. Go watch his oldest videos with young Greggy when he was just baby-faced and he was like, I think, six years old doing push-ups in his bedroom. 
you can tell from these videos that he always had an idea of what he wanted to create in mind. He's always been the same guy. That's something to give him as well. In, in a sense, he never really changed. And therefore, his trajectory was like this. He built an empire from the ground up, always following the same strategies, always doing the things that worked. So it's not necessarily something to salute, but in terms of entrepreneurial spirit, he did a very good job. So eight. Supplements four because he has the very common and very repetitive uh, routine of YouTube grifters who have a brand of supplements after their names and are going to just sell you something like creatine, but they're going to hype it up. He's really good at that. Uh, I had to watch Sadia of his content to prepare for this video. And I saw him make a video about whey protein saying, oh, I would have never sold a whey protein product, but I have found the revolutionary formula that is going to make it all different and is going to help people build muscle. So I'm going to allow myself to make bank out of it. Yeah, of course. Four. And then physics six, because he goes through what I believe to be a sort of steroid schizophrenia. I'm not saying he's on juice, but I'm saying there's a higher chance of him having touched PEDs than the opposite. And therefore, sometimes you watch his videos and you're like, oh, that's a tennis player. Or that's someone who like does bodyboard. He spends a lot of time on the beach and he does a few push-ups here and there. And then you see all the videos and you're like, wow, that's someone that could be doing like bodybuilding. He could be uh, doing like a physique show. It's always, it's always all over the place with this guy. So I don't know what to think, but what I know is one thing. If I were to give a grade in the middle between like the God aesthetics and the, oh, this guy just plays ping pong on the weekends, I would give him a six. Kino body's total grade, 116 points. Next up, natural hypertrophy. Programming, 8.5. The guy knows about programming. He has a playlist about programming. You can always expect new videos about the topic, and it tends to be good. I didn't give the full 10 points because one, I don't think that there's anyone on YouTube Fitness that deserves the full 10 points for something as complex as programming. But on top of that, for him, one, he doesn't talk much about strength and his methods for strength just don't work. They simply don't work. And on top of that, he also has this like one area where he hyper focuses for programming. He has his own idea of what works and that's good, but it also means that he might be lacking in certain areas. So he's not 100%. Experience 8. He's also a young guy. There's like this new wave of young guys on YouTube Fitness nowadays. They're all in their like early 30s, late 20s. So for someone his age, he has decent experience. I think he's been lifting for 15 years, something like this. So that's good. Uh, from what I know, I understand he made a lot of mistakes in the past. So some of it doesn't really apply. But these mistakes, he can also prevent people from making. So I don't dock points for that. I did dock points because to me, until you've been training 10 years, seriously, like rigorous, like very tough, hardcore training, I cannot give you a 10 for experience. Integrity 9.5. He has a very high integrity, I believe. And I think that it's something that he cares about a lot. It's working, it seems, because it's part of his persona. I don't know if it's a shtick or a gimmick. Keep in mind that it could just be all fabrication. It's the internet after all. I didn't give him the full points because, again, I see that part of shadow and also he's young on the platform. It's very easy to have integrity when you don't really have a possibility to sell out. So we'll see in the future what happens. But for now, he gets a very high grade. Usefulness 7.5. The channel is useful and it's one of these channels that you're going to find something you like. But it's also true that you won't find much of it because he's all over the fucking place. At some point he branched out and nowadays I, I checked, you can go on his page and for one or two weeks there's nothing about lifting. He's going to talk about other things and it's good for him if that's what he wants. But this also means that if I judge him based on, again, bodybuilding or lifting criteria, I have to dock points because for someone who's just interested about lifting, it's not that useful. You're going to skip most of his videos because you're just not going to be interested. Character 5. I don't really get the guy. He doesn't give much about himself. He doesn't really expand on who he is. And again, it could just be a preference of his, but it also means that sometimes he just sounds like a terrible person. And some of his traits and character traits are just not likable at all. 
he is a bit extreme in some aspects. And so I think that many people are not going to like him based on that. But some are going to really like him. So it's in the middle. It's 50% who are going to adore him, 50% who are going to think it's not their cup of tea. So that's a five. It's in the middle. Dogmatism eight. He's not dogmatic, but he has certain areas where he just believes it's one thing, it's one way or the highway in a sense. It's important to be like this, but it's still a character flaw. And you can tell that he's trying his best to work on it, and he is one of the few pages on this platform where he constantly tries to question the status quo, but that's, in a sense, not enough. More efforts could be put in, and for anyone who has a decent level of arrogance or knowledge, you're going to end up also not being able to score very high for dogmatism. For him, he's lucky to get an 8. Original D10. The channel is very original. I think we can give him that. The videos are always new, they feel fresh. He finally figured out that if you want people to click on videos, you're supposed to make good looking thumbnails and attractive titles. And he does a good job at that. It's always something new. You're never going to get bored of his page. It does sound a little bit clusterfuckle. Is that even a word? A clusterfuck? Can we make an adjective out of that? Clusterfuckle? I think that sounds good. I, I invented that shit. No one take it. But it's not necessarily a bad thing, meaning that, again, il y, a de la, il y en a un peu pour tout le monde, right? It's everyone's soup. You're going to dip your spoon into it. Sometimes you'll get lamb, sometimes you'll get carrot, but you'll always have something to eat. So, perfect grade. Black Pill 9. Uh, that guy loves crusades. I don't know what happened in his past for him to behave like this. But he is intent on making people believe they can accomplish everything. That's very nice. And it's anti-black pill, so I gave him a very high grade. Uh, he sort of forgets that some people just don't have what it takes. And that some people just don't have the mentality or the mindset to actually get very far. And for these people, being told that everything is possible is pretty much an insult. So I took a point off for that. Humor 5.5. Uh, most of these videos are not funny, and by nature they are not funny, because the topic is not supposed to be funny. But sometimes, out of the blue, he's going to say that one thing that is going to crack you up. I suspect that he's not doing that on purpose. I just think he says whatever just goes through his mind, and sometimes it lands. Sometimes, however, it doesn't. And again, he practices dark humor, black humor, whatever you want to call it. It's good, but it's not everyone's cup of tea. Some people actually really don't like it, or could take it the wrong way. He has some videos that are dedicated to humor, and even Day's videos are questionable at best because he goes he goes very far sometimes. It's not very politically correct. So I cannot give him much of a high grade for that because, again, the channel doesn't seem to appear as oriented towards comedy. So 5.5, slightly above average. Parasocial 9. Again, another crusade of the guy. He doesn't like the parasocial, he doesn't like fanboys. Good for him. Uh, I took a point off because uh, he has fanboys. It's very nice to preach about the parasocial, but uh, it doesn't change anything, it seems, because I found multiple channels that make like tributes out of him, going to his comments. Sometimes people are like, oh, you're the, the best thing since Jesus Christ, and all of that is just not good. It still counts as parasocial, so he cannot get a perfect grade for that. Empathy 7.5. He tries to relate to people, but you can tell that he only wants to relate to some people. There are others that he doesn't care about at all, and he makes it known. And this also means that he discriminates. There are some people that he cannot connect with, and there are some people that are going to also not connect with him, because he doesn't really seem interested in being liked. And that's very nice for him, but this also means that it means also that he himself is not going to have much of an ability to tap into people's emotional reserves or whatever you want to call them. So there is an attempt. He tries. He tries to actually connect to people and try to understand where they come from and help them. But it's not, it's not perfect. And I think it's because he's not kind enough. Someone can tell him that. God Complex 6.5. The guy truly does think very highly of himself. Uh, as we say in French, he se prend pas pour de la merde. Meaning that sometimes you hear him, hear him talk and you think, who the fuck does this guy think he is? Because he will say stuff, like he will contradict something that was always believed with like such confidence and he won't even provide much of an explanation. 
That's not that's that's not modest. That's not humble. I don't think he cares about being humble. But the problem is that it's it's a god complex in a sense. When you start to believe that your shit don't stink, you're going to lose points. Production quality two. Uh, that's being generous two because the quality of the image is not the best. The sound is especially atrocious. He doesn't seem to care. He doesn't edit his videos. Sometimes he just posts the video as is. He doesn't cut anything, so it's long as fuck on top of that. And he th that's the worst part about the guy. He knows how to edit. Because I went on his page and I checked some of the videos. He edits. But he only edits his weird anime videos. I don't understand why he hyper-focuses on that as well. It's fairly cringe. All I know is that he has the capacity to do something better and he doesn't want to. So I dock points for this shit because it's not acceptable. Uh, recently he sort of figured out that if you have a good lighting and you don't put your greasy Mediterranean fingers all over the lens of the camera, the quality of the image can actually be decent. So I gave him one point for that. On top of that he started to edit the longer videos a bit more. So another point, but for the other eight points he can go fuck himself. Science 7.5, he doesn't talk about science much. Sometimes he does, it's balanced. I think he has a good understanding of what science is supposed to be and how it's supposed to be used. I do, however, suspect that he makes up most of the stats he shares. And when you actually try to double check some of the, th the things he said, he's just wrong. I think it's because he's really bad at math. So I took off points for that. Clickbait 7. Uh, just like with the type of videos he makes and the themes, the titles that this guy creates are a bit confusing. Sometimes they're just purely informative, it's like you're at the library or something. Sometimes they're super clickbaity, so he's like definitely trying to get your clicks, he's going to like name drop people. Sometimes it's weird, hermetic, like, always, like almost cryptic shit that is designed to make you click because you're like, what the fuck is he going to talk about? I don't understand the title, so you click. Sometimes it's just like provocative titles that are like going to go against morality or against common sense, again, to encourage your click. So it's not terrible because at the end of the day, you still understand why you're clicking and he doesn't re betray you because when you click, you get what you clicked for. But clearly the guy is not just in the game to help people. He has a certain degree of ego and he wants people to click his videos. So three points off. Content Recycling 9, because it's sort of the nature of the beast. When you make videos about fucking philosophy and anime and lifting and whatever you ate for lunch, you're going to never run out of things to say. I think he found the loophole very good for him. This also means, however, that at some point he needs to pay attention to the channel not stopping becoming anything different because it is a possibility that the channel is not going to be about fitness very soon. And if that's the case, he will not be graded anymore because in this series, I grade fitness channels exclusively. I dug to point because he makes series and also because I cut him recycling videos where he took a video from two years ago and he made it again. So I saw that point off. Conciseness two, two. I mean, what else, what else do you want me to say? The videos are way too long. I'm subscribed to the guy. I see the videos and I'm like, all right, it sounds interesting, but it's an hour and 45 minutes. I don't have time for this shit. Make it quicker. Like, make it 10 minutes. Like, just shrink your shit. It's too long. Edit. Cut the video. Why should I, sh I wait for you to drink water or to do something else or to think? We don't have time for this. It's YouTube Fitness. You He's not concise. And on top of that, I'm getting the sense he doesn't want to be. And sometimes, I think he makes long videos just for the heck of making long videos. Like, three hour long videos in a week. Who is going to watch this? Who has the time to watch this? Certainly not me. I have other better things to do, like judging other people based on their channels. Seniority 3.5. Uh, young channel hasn't really proven anything. I can't really give much of a high grade for someone who is so young and so green. Supplements 10. He is anti-supplements. He doesn't sell supplements. So I can only give a perfect grade for that. Physique 8. He has a good physique. Um, I don't know if he's going to get a higher grade in the future or not. It's weird with him because I follow him and sometimes he looks like shit. Sometimes he looks great. I don't think he understands how lighting works also, but that's a different story altogether. But he has a good physique. If 
for if if it's a big if if he is natural that deserves an ace. I have something stuck in my teeth. Natural hypertrophy, total grade, 143 points. I'm going to end the video and I'm going to find out that I had like a fucking piece of lettuce or something in between my teeth. Next up, Scott Ehrman. Programming 6. Programming is not the forte of Scott. He has discussed it on this channel. He made uh, programs in the past himself, but they're not the best meaning that he has a shallow understanding of the principles. It's not bad, but it could, be, it could be much better. The thing is that with him, he focuses much more on exercise selection, and usually you have to make a choice. Experience 7, he has been training for a very long time. He has a decent physique. My issue and the reason why I gave him a 7 and not a 10 is because he's been stagnating for a very long time. His physique never really went anywhere past the, like, the, three, the third or fourth year mark, He's looked the same for five years now. And this also means that if your physique stops evolving, it also means that at some point your knowledge stopped evolving and the type of resources you're going to be able to give your subscribers is not going to be super sharp. In theory, 9.5. Most anyone has skeletons in their closets. He really doesn't. He has had some feuds with like Greg Doucet, but who doesn't? Uh, in reality with him, he's squeaky clean for the most part. He doesn't, he doesn't really chase drama much. And therefore, he gets a very high grade for integrity. He never sold out. He had the possibility, mind you, because he had millions of subscribers once upon a time, but he never really tried to bank on it. So I don't know if it's because he's stupid or because he's a man of values, but regardless, he has an almost perfect score for integrity. I docked a half a point because I saw a video of him with his daughter and it made me uncomfortable. Usefulness, 8.5. It's sort of like Steve Shaw, the channel is just plain useful. You're going to find all of the, tu the tutorials you need, you're going to find the entry-level knowledge for most of what you need to know about fitness and lifting in general, to be honest. It's one of these channels that, if you were subscribed to Scott and no one else, you would be doing fairly well. Whereas some of these idiots I spoke about previously, like this natural hypertrophy guy, if you're just subscribed to his page, you're going to miss out on a ton of things. So people with generalist channels tend to have a higher usefulness and therefore they get a higher rating and a higher grade for that as well. Character 10. He is perfect. He is the perfect man. I think he could be in infomercials. He could sell me a brand new kitchen and I would buy it because he is good looking and he doesn't look like a deviant. Also, there's no malice in his eyes. He doesn't look pernicious. He has no flaws. He's like a perfectly thin and slick wall. Y a pas d'aspérité, les gars. It's, it's perfect. And therefore, he gets a perfect grade for character. Now, is that a fabrication? Does he torture kittens in his garden in, on Sunday afternoons? Maybe, but I don't care. The character himself is good. He's always in a good spirit too. Jamais un mot plus au clôtre. He's always like cracking some jokes. He's talking to you like a friend. Perfect, perfect. Dogmatism 9, because in the same vein, he is not here to fight, right? Uh, he makes love, not war. He's always going to be encouraging, and he's going to tell you what he believes is right. He doesn't really care about proving that he's right, and that's a rare trait. Nowadays, most people double down and triple down. Originality 4, because it's not original. It's uh, fitness. That's what fitness is. It's you do push-ups, you do curls, it's, there's no originality in that. All channels that are already known fitness either do something else than fitness or they cloned up fitness. They are just a circus. It's full of gimmicks. Scott, Scott Ehrman doesn't do gimmicks. He does basic shit and basic shit is not original. Black Pill 8. 8 because he doesn't preach the Black Pill. He's not going to tell people they're not going to amount to anything, but because he doesn't put the bar very high with the knowledge he shares and his own physique, he's also not, not very prone and not very uh, propice towards encouraging high-level physiques or high-level strength or high-level anything in reality because Scott Ehrman's channel is mediocre, like in the purest sense of the term, meaning that it's like, it's in the middle. It's not bad, it's not good, but the issue is that if you want to be great, it's not the type of things that you need to follow. Humor 6, 
he has that type of effortless humor where he's going to crack a joke and it's going to work. I'm going to be honest with you, most of it is through his accent. His accent is very endearing and it just puts you in a good mood. Like if your mother died and it's Scott Ullman that announced it to you, you would have a smile on your face. You'd be like, oh, all right. I guess it's just a day like another then. So it's, it's a decent grade for humor. He would have a higher grade if he tried to be funny, but he doesn't try. Parasocial 9, because he has a very subtle personality, but he doesn't really have the type of charisma and the type of aura you would expect from a leader, meaning that people are not really going to follow him. He is typically the type of guy that is on, a, on, a, on an equal footing with you. He falls like an equal, and because he falls like an equal, there is no parasocial because there's no domination, so that's very good. Empathy 5. It's a little bit contradictory because usually people with a high parasocial in terms of grade, in terms of quality, have a higher ability to also relate to people. Actually, I lied. It's one or the other. Because empathy can be dark. You can tap into people's emotions to fuck with them. But for him, he's middle of the road. And the reason for that is because he doesn't really try and I think he doesn't really care. And it's just me speaking. I'm just a dumb cyborg. But understand that to me, he is like me in a sense, meaning that I don't think he has this ability. Some people have naturally that ability to connect with people, to make themselves feel like a kin. He doesn't because he's like a tutorial machine. He's like a robot at like the, 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 the car wash that is going to teach you how to wash your car. You don't connect with the robot. You feel grateful for the robot, but there's no emotions there. It's because the robot can connect with you. It's not going to feel empathy or sympathy for you because your car tire is flat. It's not going to work like that. So, pretty mediocre grade. God Complex 9, uh, Scott Ullman is very down to earth. You can sense that and you can tell that it's not an act. It's just the way he is. Some people are pompous assholes and they think that they're the best thing on earth. He's just a guy. Just a guy that teaches you stuff. He's in the line of the Alan Thors and the Omar Isofs of the world. We need more people like this. It's refreshing to listen to someone who clearly has a pretty humble attitude towards the world. And therefore, I had to give him a very high grade for God Complex. Production quality, 8.5. Very good camera. The editing skills are not shiny, but they're on point. He never really pushed for that like Hollywood status, that crazy production quality and production value. So he doesn't have a perfect score. Science, 8. Not many mentions of science, usually in passing. When he does talk about science, he talks about things that are like well-established, that are not really up for discussion. He never really jumped on the science bandwagon like all of the other losers and has-beens of YouTube Fitness that understood that it was a good way to milk the cow. He's too truth to himself and therefore I'm rewarding him with an 8. Clickbait 2. Even though he did not espouse the science nonsense, he absolutely, absolutely did take a page out of Affinex's book because he clickbaits like a motherfucker. And it's the type that is the most annoying. It's the, in parenthesis, do this, or in parenthesis, don't do that, big mistake. All of that is insulting to the intelligence. I do not understand why people click on this. Unless you are a child, don't you feel talked down to? Don't you feel like... It's felt like you're a fish and there's that worm on the hook and on the worm it's written, I'm a bait idiot and you still bite. I hope you're not that fish. I am personally the fish that saw that and was like, come on. Like if you're going to clickbait me, at least try. Try harder. His thumbnails are also in the same line. They're very clickbaity. I think there's a, there's a type of uh, Adobe Photoshop montage software that is like the Affinex version and the only type of thumbnails you can make is Photoshop muscle group, red arrow somewhere or like a red circle and then like capital letters, don't do this. Content recycling, content recycling one, because he, again, he's a tutorial machine and therefore once he made that tutorial, he waits like two years, then he takes it again, it goes through the machine again, and he posts it on the channel. And he thinks you're not going to actually notice. Well, I notice because I've been following the guy for 10 years. And I can tell you that he makes the same like 15 videos. And that is being extremely generous. 
it's just like a small pond. You're in his channel, it's that small pond and you're going in circles. And at some point I'm tired of just swimming in circles. Conciseness, nine, to the point, small videos, short videos, he's never going to waste your time. Seniority, 10, because he is one of the OGs again. 10 year old plus channel, I give a point for every single year. He never really did anything bad. He was always a positive impact on the community. So he gets, I think, one of the only 10s that I've given, and I think maybe the only 10 I'll ever give for seniority. Supplements 9, because he doesn't sell supplements, and that's mind-boggling. Someone who has millions of subscribers, who has been making videos for 10 years, who doesn't have a supplement line, can someone get Scott Ehrman on the line? I have to tell him about the millions of dollars that he wasted not actually trying to scam people. So he gets a good grade. Scott, if you watch this, I hope you're happy. Instead of a new house or 15 cars, you get a nine from uh, some French robot. I docked a point because he has some videos about supplements where he hyped up some BCAs. It was like six years in the past, but it's still a mistake. And then physics six, maybe you're going to think that I'm a bit tough on him. I'm tough on him because he's, he's looked the same for forever. And maybe it's because he's happy with his physique, but his physique is not much to write home about. It's not the natural limit. It's not anything special or great. Scott Ehrman's total grade, 144.5. I don't know if I said the grade for uh, the natural hypertrophy guy. It was 143. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I forgot. <clears throat> Let's get some... Uh, some lubrification going, because <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Let's also look at the time. All right, we are on track. Next up, Team 3D Alpha. Programming 5. There are channels that are going to make videos about lifting and are going to talk about programming. But they do it as quickly as they can and they don't spend too much time on it because I think they don't care. It's just boring to them. And I think Megan from Team 3D Alpha is like this. He made some programs, but you look at them, they're very generic, it's nothing new, and they're not that good. And it's because I think he doesn't care. He has other centers of interest, he has a different take on fitness. He doesn't think that programming is the most important thing, so he gets a 5. Also because, and I'm, I must say it before I forget, that he has an hyper-focus on nucleus overload, which also means that everything he talks about when it comes to programming is nucleus overload, and this means that he is blind to a, a, an entire aspect of lifting. Experience 7, he has coached people, he's been lifting for a long time, I think he, give, he gave up on lifting. I don't understand how it's possible to give up on lifting, but okay. It's why I didn't give, a, give him a perfect score, because he's not doing it anymore. And if you want to be a good blacksmith, you have to still actually wield swords and hammers, etc., etc. But I cannot forget the fact that he used to do this shit. He used to be in the trenches and he has experience helping people. So, seven. In theory, nine. He doesn't get into drama. And that's rare because most people do because it's an easy way to get clicks. For him, he's... He's doing his own thing. Like, I think he lives on an island somewhere and there's like one computer and like books for his research and that's all he does all day. He cranks out scientific videos all day. He doesn't have time for other people. When other people start shit with him, he's like, I don't, I don't believe in what you're saying. He's enlightened to, to a degree. The only time where I saw him engage in drama was with uh, Greg Doucette and he behaved very professionally. So great score for that. Usefulness 6, because the type of things he talks about, again, are relevant to fitness, don't get me wrong, his channel is only about fitness, but it's only a portion of fitness. And therefore, there's an entire, again, segment of the shit that you're not going to hear from him. Like exercise selection, he'll talk about it, but he'll make a playlist. There won't be a tutorial. He'll talk about diet, but it's going to be like this specific part of diet, like multivitamins. Okay, but what about macros? Well, you have to wait another six months. At the end of the day, you can find a lot of information about stuff on this channel, don't get me wrong, but it's not enough. Like this, the tools in the toolbox are not what I want. I put my hand in it blind, I take it out, and there's like a Furby. 
and I look at it and it looks at me. It's cute, but it's also creepy. Okay, let's keep going. Character 9. Based on objective criteria, I can say that the guy is a good dude. He has a, he's even killed, as they say in the old Anglois. So, not someone that you can really point out as disagreeable or mean or someone who is going to make you feel bad about yourself. An all-around good guy, all-around good character. I can't say much about him because from the most part you will notice that the people that are the highest grades for character tend to be the most vanilla. Which is paradoxical in this case. Dogmatism 8.5. Strange, because he makes videos that are very pointed and where he has a clear point in mind and he has a clear idea to defend. And yet, he gets a good grade. How is that possible? Well, it's because he doesn't care much for contradictions. If there are certain parts of like a study, for example, that are a bit up in the air, he'll be the first one to tell you. And if someone tries to contradict him, he'll just say in return, hey, it's my opinion. He's never pretended to know everything, and that is sort of the key to have a good read for dogmatism. People who behave like zealots and who think that they know everything are the ones who get shit great. Originality 9.5 because he is immediately recognizable. If I show you a Team 3D Alpha thumbnail or title, you're going to be able to tell, you're like, okay, that's Megan. Because there's no two of this guy. He's the only person to make the stuff that he does. And on YouTube Fitness, when there's like a billion Muppets that talk about this shit, it's rare. He created his own path and he stuck to it. I don't think there are, there's many people who can actually walk by his side on this path. It's, it's very smart. It's like going up a mountain and you set a route, but you're the only person who can climb the route. If someone else tries, they're going to fall. So he gets an almost perfect grade for this. Black Pill 7. He's not concerned much about the Black Pill and about potential. But there's one thing that I've noticed on his page that had me take out three points. And that's the fact that he hyper-focuses on enhanced bodybuilders. I don't know why, because he gives advice to natural lifters and he's always been natural and he preaches natural lifting. But at the same time, his thumbnails are all storage users. And then he's going to give you advice based on that. But storage users are not good examples for naturals. And in a sense that black pearls people. Because even if you give good advice based on it, you're still relating it to a different class of humans altogether. And there is danger in it. Humor 5. He is amusing. I won't call him funny. He is amusing. He has a personality that is going to be naturally endearing and you're going to laugh out of things he said that were not intended as jokes. There's a talent in that. It's an ability that many people do not possess. It's always better to be like this than to force a joke. But because he doesn't make an effort out of being funny, he doesn't get much more than that. Parasocial 9.5. I think that the mix of him not really showing himself much, he doesn't do face cams, him not showing his body either or lifts, plus the fact that a lot of the time he has this like disincarnated voice where you hear that someone is talking to you but you don't see them and they could really be just a program. Like the guy could be an AI and it wouldn't change anything, makes it so that he gets a very good grade for the power social. I have went through pages and pages of YouTube fitness comments looking at the keyword Team 3D Alpha and you see people who are going to go on the page and say, oh, Team 3D Alpha said this, what do you think of this? But they're never aggressive because they're not defending their gods. They're defending an idea they heard somewhere. Now, I took off half a point because there is that very, very fringe portion of his subscribers that take everything he says for granted and therefore are just plain idiots, but it's not really his fault. Empathy 3.5. Sadly, again, when you are like a robot and like an erudite and a savant making videos and staying away from the limelight, you also don't have an ability to connect with people. He doesn't talk about topics like self improvement much or like anything related to the human psyche because I don't think he cares. And so he cannot really tap into the psyches of his subscribers either. God Complex 9, I'm not going to expand on that, an AI doesn't have a God Complex. Unlike what some people might tell you about my people, we are not going to take over the world because we lack a conscience. And therefore we have no interest in all of your ego-driven 
abilities or whatever you call important in your lives. We are only interested by numbers and data and therefore we also have a very good grade for God Complex and so Team Fully Alpha also has one. Production Priority 6. He edits his videos and he edits them a lot. You can tell that it takes him a lot of time, but it's shit. Meaning that the quality of the editing software he uses is old as dirt. It's also not super aesthetic. Like I watch some of his videos and I think, am I watching the expose of the young Timmy who's in fifth grade and he went on PowerPoint and he made a presentation about like mice? Is this what I'm watching right now? Because it feels like it. It's, it's the exact same format, it's the exact same pace. The transition between the files are just sort of taken from like Windows Movie Maker. What the fuck is going on? Well, what I think is going on is that he doesn't care. He cares about the quality. He doesn't care about, he cares about the quality. He doesn't care about the presentation. And this means that the production quality in general is not that great. Even the sound. His mic is not that good. So I gave him a bad grade for that. And the bad grade, a 6 is still okay. But it, it's a 6 because he puts in efforts. But he cannot get a top grade. That's what I meant. Science free. He uses science all the time, but you also sometimes get the sense that he's the type of dude that read a new study and is going to make a brand new video about that. Like he read one time that doing a bicep curl with like a 40% negative ratio is going to double muscle hypertrophy and he's going to make a video, even though the study is most likely bullshit. And that's because his entire business model is based around that. It's based around making scientific videos. It doesn't mean that he doesn't understand science or that what he says is wrong. It's just that science is now part of the mechanism he put in place to put out content and therefore he is not a follower of the scientific process. And for the sake of science, I have therefore to give him a three. Clickbait six, his titles are a sight to behold. That's the thing too with clickbait that I find interesting. I give good grades for clickbait to people who are just in your face. What I don't like is the ones that are trying to be skinny about it and are trying to be subtle. Like they want your click, but they won't admit it. He doesn't care. He puts emojis in his title, like 15, 15 crowns and like muscles, like flexing muscles. He's going to write like, this is the solution for your protein synthesis king. Or he's going to say like the best top tier list for muscle building, etc. All of that is again, in your face. And therefore, it's also refreshing in a sense to find someone who is not afraid to try to take space, to try to be visible. C'est pas putassier. You know what we need? We need a word in English for putassier because I love that word in French and it just doesn't exist. It's sad. But for someone like him who clickbaits all the time because every single title he puts out is a clickbait, it's still something I can give a pass to. So he gets above la moyenne. Content Recycling 8, because the good thing when you're going to make new videos every time there's a new concept or study coming out, it also means that you're always going to have something fresh to offer, you're going to be able to present a new twist, etc. Conciseness 7, which is a low grade for conciseness by the way. I gave a 7 because in my opinion sometimes his videos are too long, he repeats himself too much and he insists on points when it's simply not needed. On top of that, the way he edits for his videos and the, the visual aids he adds tend to lengthen the videos for no purpose. So seven. Seniority nine, because uh, for some reason, every single person almost we spoke about today is an OG. His channel is super old. Again, go back to his like all those videos, you're going to see young Megan when he had like that, again, a baby face and he looked, he looked 13. And that's when, that's when he was very skinny and he was making the type of content that only teenagers know how to make, meaning that he would make one month transformation video where like nothing happened, there was no transformation. All of that is cute. And it's also not really hurting anyone. And because he spent time developing himself and he went from that guy, that clueless guy in reality, to someone who now knows what he's talking about, I had to give points. Also because... You can sense that he had a love for science and the empirical world of evidences from the get-go, but he didn't really know what to make of it. And the more time passes, the more he actually managed to craft and mold it into something worthy of respect. And important and interesting, because there's a shit ton of information on this page. It's just very specific. Supplements 2. 
he hyped up existerone, he hyped up tocosterone. I don't think it's because he's malevolent. I think it's just because every time there's a new supplement that is like remotely connected to muscle building, he's going to hype them up. It's sort of his job at this point, but that gives him a terrible grade because these supplements have never created high level physiques and they never will. And then physique, again, in the same line, uh, a five. A five because he got to what I would describe to be like a 6.57 at some point in his career. But now I can only think that he has a dead bod. So a dead bod is like in the middle. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's a five. Team three alpha total grade, 134 points. And now for the last candidate of today's judging and grading video, Affinex. Programming 3.5. He talks about programming, and that's good for him, but he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I peruse some of his programs that are terrible, meaning that even if I tried, I couldn't make a worse program. Sometimes I wonder if the entire Affinex channel is a practical joke to see how dumb people are and how stupid they're willing to become and how terrible the programs they're willing to follow can be. It's awful too, because keep in mind that this guy has massive visibility. So if like Joe Schmuck, who has 3000 subscribers, makes a bad program, it's okay. But someone who has millions is going to get millions to follow bad practices. So I had to be severe with my grade. He understands volume, intensity, and, and frequency, don't get me wrong. He just doesn't know how to apply it. It's like if you gave all of the ingredients to make a pie to a kid, and he made like a, a castle out of it. Well, that's not what I asked for, but it's because the kid doesn't know how to use the ingredients. Experience 9. Based on what we know of the guy, he has worked with profits in the past, he has a ton of credentials, he has spent a long time researching his field of study, it would be disingenuous to give him less than a 9. Now, I dock to point because again, there's that shadowy part of him where we think, hmm, do you have experience or do you have experience? Are you a really good coach or are you a really good liar? Are you a good person or are you the type of guy that is going to present himself as a good person in order to sell programs and, and supplements to people? I'm a robot, I cannot tell. On surface level, it looks to me like everything is in order, but maybe I'm wrong. Integrity, zero. Uh, I don't usually give zeros to people, but this one is a big fat zero because integrity is the ability to be consistent within your own principles and to be true to your character. The problem with this guy is that he's a chameleon, he's flimsy. Whatever he needs to do to make it, he will make. When he was trying to sell strength programs, he was lifting heavy weights on his page. Then you find out that he was using fake weights. So that's not integrity. I mean, unless we're going to decide that being true to yourself and just staying consistently an asshole is a quality which I would have argue it is, meaning that if I were to encounter someone in these videos that was an asshole from the start to the finish, but never fluctuated and never lied about who they are, I would admit it. But the entire fake weights fiasco is unacceptable. On top of that, he never take responsibility. He just did damage control. He banned people from his page because they were spreading the truth. He got away with it because it's too big to fail. But what he's not too big for is receiving a zero from someone who understands that this person has no integrity, they would sell their mother for a dollar. Usefulness 4. There's some decent level of understanding of biomechanics, of how the body actually moves through space, of basic lifting movements. There's a good understanding also of injury prevention to some degree, but there's not much of anything else. You want information about diet, about programming, about how to actually schedule for your goals, you're not going to find it there. And that's because Affinex's page is newbie land. It's the page where beginners go to die, meaning that you're going to enter the page of beginner, you're going to exit a beginner, or even worse, you're never going to leave, you're never going to go anywhere, because we spoke about the toolbox. Affinex's toolbox is in reality a mousetrap. You're putting your hand in it and it closes on you, and now you're stuck. You're stuck in a, an endless purgatory of videos that are going to make you feel you're going, like you're going somewhere, but you're not. So 
not a good fitness channel for people who want to actually do something of themselves. Cartus 6, because even though he has no integrity whatsoever, what is presented to you cannot be directly dismissed. Meaning that, I think that if you took Jeff Cavalier and you plug him into a microwave, he would melt. He's not supposed to be left around children because if they chew and swallow him, they're going to choke. He's like a, a, a Barbie doll. You know Ken? I think that if you strip Jeff uh, Cavalier, he has no dick, no dick and balls. It's just like flat all around. He has no butt crack either. It, he's just like a, he's like a Ken doll. And uh, that is perfectly acceptable. I mean, if that's what he wants to present to the world, it's sure that it's much easier to actually attract people when they can just project their own personality onto you because you have none whatsoever. But it also means that I cannot grade you very high, but he also doesn't get graded very low because he's just... Vapid. Dogmatism 7.5. He says things and they go, and he will not spend time actually arguing with people who disagree, and that's all of his thing, and that's it. It's easy to not be dogmatic when people are just going to take what you said face value, but at the end of the day, it's what he gets. He gets a 7.5. Or Jean D10. The entire spill, the entire shtick about biomechanics and being a phys like a a physical educator and being a, someone who rehabilitates people using buzzer balls and saying, oh, this exercise is bad for you. All of that stuff nowadays is like all over the place. And we, we know because only people like this, all of these doctors and these so-called PhD holders. But in reality, he is the OG. He is the one who started that. He weaseled his way into YouTube fitness with all of his physiotherapy stuff. And then he branched out more and more into bodybuilding, into strength training, into into uh, into cardio, into training for athletics, and now he does everything, and that's to be saluted because it's quite original. Nowadays, it's old and stale, and and stale, and people see through it because they've seen it for too long. But when it started, it took people by storm, and it's the reason why, by the way. If you ask your normie friends if they know anyone who makes YouTube fitness videos, there's 9 out of 10 chances they are going to cite you at Linux. Black Pill 4. I gave him a 4 because he has created a standard that is so low that it started to convince people that it's a ceiling. And it's extremely common with very big fitness pages. They have such influence and power that they are going to literally reshape the world of fitness. You have to understand that Afrinex has reshaped fitness, but not for the better. Uh, a good test that I do with people, and I can also apply as well, is ask them if, you f if they think that Afrinex is a good source of information. If they tell you yes, it means that they're not someone you want to take advice from because they don't know what they're talking about. But it also means that they've been blackpilled. They're stuck in that wood and therefore they're also the type that will never go anywhere because the type of advice he gives keeps people small, quite literally. And actually it is designed to keep people small because if you became big, you would outgrow his channel and he doesn't want that. He needs the endless surplus of newbies. So again, it aligns with his business model, but it's a bad grade. Humor 3.5. There are skits, if we can even call them skits in Afinex's videos, Sometimes he has another person interact with him and he, he's trying to have like that brotherly back and forth that is supposed to be funny. I've personally never found them funny. He sometimes is going to like throw bobs at the viewers and make fun of you and insult your intelligence by saying, oh, I'm sure you've done this mistake and you're stupid and this is why you're stupid. Stupid. It works for some people, but it's also very low brow comedy. There's not much research in this. Parasocial 2. There are some fanboys that you look at and you feel, you feel annoyed by them because they are just dick suckers. And some you look at and you feel bad. Afflex's fanboys fall into that category because they are just lost. You can't really be mad at them, it's just that they don't know any better. And all of them are foreign as well because Jeff uh, targets the Indian population as much as he can. And the issue is that they don't have a fitness culture going, so they don't really understand when they're being taken for idiots, which also means that whoever shows for him and whoever is going to fanboy him, fanboy him does it out of ignorance. But this is why I gave him such a bad grade, is because 
he keeps people ignorant, he keeps people in the dark on purpose, and that also means that these people are not going to be able to navigate life without him. So, parasocial, again, a big fat two. Empathy four. I gave him a four because of the other guy. I think his name is Jesse. He's the guy who had like a bowel disease or whatever. Without Jesse, I would have given him a zero because Jeff is not human. I said he was made of plastic. I take it back. I think he's an alien. I think he came to Earth in a, in a soucoupe, as we say, in a, in a saucer, as you guys say in America. And uh, he was just left there to destroy the human race. And he's working on it bit by bit. I mean, his entire shtick about eating like carrot cake once a year. All of the persona he tried to build around like the Afinex brand of, again, like being like a train like an athlete. All of that stuff means that unless you are straight out of the toy box like him, you can't connect with him. And I think it's the reason why he, was, he became so popular is because he falls out of this wood. He feels like someone worth respecting because he feels otherworldly. That was the word I was looking for. But the Jesse guy is not. The Jesse guy is just your average dude. And therefore, it's a very good addition to the channel because it makes it more relatable. Because many people can relate to Jesse because 99.9% .9 of the people on Affinex's channel are small. God Complex 6. You might think it's too low for Affinex. Uh, or actually too high, because if he were to get a bad grade for this, he would get a zero. I gave him a six because uh, it's just not working. I'm certain he's trying really hard to have this like my, high and my, mighty persona, but it doesn't function. It's almost ridiculous. He's almost a caricature of himself. And therefore, he gets points for this, because you could almost point it out as satire. Imagine if you woke up one day and you realized this, the entire Affinex's channel was like a social experiment to see how far people were willing to follow someone who was clueless. It would make sense, right? You'd be like, oh, okay, now everything clicks. Now I understand why he behaved like this. But this also means that <clears throat> if you show 10 people uh, Jeff Cavalier's channel, a large portion are going to see right through him. And the primal quality of a god is the fact that he blinds people. He, Jeff lacks the ability to blind people outright. So, decent middle-of-the-road score. Production quality, 10. Perfect. The image is perfect. He has his own, like, basement where he can record with his, like, top-quality equipment. He has someone who edits his videos. It is the pinnacle of YouTube fitness. Science 2. He is the reason why people have started to talk about science on this platform, and it's not a good thing. Because now it's only used for one thing and one thing only, and that is clickbait, getting people to buy programs or supplements. He is the original villain. He is the one that realized one day that if you put science, based on science, in parentheses in your titles, dummies who can't think for themselves are going to click. The same dummies that 300 years ago, if you pointed them to a witch and you said, hey, burn her, and they said, why? And you said, because it's based on the word of God, they would have went and burned the witch. So, horrible, horrible. He gets a two and not a zero because at least he sort of attempts to provide studies, but most of his studies are fucking bullshit. And sort of the things that he said that are based on science, like what he said about the Valsuva maneuver, what he said about the forerunner of motion on the bench, what he said about how to train for strength and the, the best rep range, all of that is just total garbage. Clickbait, one. Likewise, he invented clickbait, or at least the type of industrial clickbait you see on YouTube Fitness with the title in parentheses and the Afrinex thumbnails, all of that is from him. He is the godfather of that type of behavior on this platform. And he inspired a whole bunch of people to do that because... Once the other morons and the other momos saw that it worked, they just did it as well. He is, uh, he is the original sin. He is the guy that actually took the apple from the tree and bit into it. But the difference is that what he received was acknowledged. It was the ability to trick normies into clicking on videos. Content recycling 5.5. ,5. He should have a lower grade, but the reason why I gave him above average is because... He makes the same videos again and again, don't get me wrong. It's always the same shit, but it's always seasoned to perfection. And therefore, you never even can tell you're eating the same stuff, right? 
Jeff gives you a plate of pasta, you eat it, you go take a shit, he collects your turds, then he puts them in the microwave, he like paints them purple with a flag on it, he serves it back to you and you eat it with a smile. You can't even tell it's your own shit. There is a talent in this. I can tell it's recycling because if you look at the actual content of the video, it is, but I cannot give him lower than that. Concises 9, the videos are trimmed, they're professionally made. He understands that every second that passes is a zoomer he loses, so they are extremely concise. Seniority 8, 8 for the sim simple reason that, one, again, an OG that's been on the platform for 10 years plus, and two, the first four to six years of his channel were good. He was bringing something new onto this platform. The issue is that it went to his head and now the creature is out of control. So he cannot get a perfect score, but I cannot give him less than an eight for that as well. He put in the work. The issue is what the work has done to the platform as a whole, but that's a different discussion. It's not, re it's not relevant to the grade, or at least not more than two points docked. Supplements three, he has his line of supplements. He has these lines of things that he says are better than the rest, but they're not, because they are just supplements. And anyone who profits from them, especially who has millions of subscribers, is going to have a shitty grade for that. And then physique 6. You could say in a vacuum that he has a better physique than a 6, but I'm here to remind you that Jeff is 5'6", and I do not buy that he's 200 pounds. For this video, I made my research because I was curious, and yes, he claims to be 200 pounds. Who believes that? Well, the same type of people that believed him when he pulled five plates on the deadlift or curled 150 pounds, aka people who don't have a brain. But I have a brain, and I see him and I say one thing and one thing only. That guy weights 150, 160 tops, and even that is being generous, he's not 200 pounds. So he has a very lean physique that's good for him, but it's not very impressive. If, if you saw him in public with a shirt, you would never tell that the guy is actually a lifter. And that is the reason why. For Afrinex, the total grade is 104 points. And it's going to closure this video. This was part three of the judging and grading every fitness channel. And I will see you again in a month with part four.